All right, hello everybody, and today we're gonna to be deriving the formula for the expected value of a binomial probability distribution. So we have our random variable x right here, which follows a binomial probability distribution. And we kind of have two parameters, n and p, where our n is the number of trials and our p is the probability of getting that success. So these are kind of just the basic parameters we're going to be using. So let's go on to finding the probability that our random variable equals to some value x right here. While well, using the definition of binomial probability, it's going to be n choose x times p to the x times one minus p to the n minus x. So this expression right here will give us the probability that our random variable equals to some value x. And just to be clear right here, our x is always between zero and n. It can't go outside of that domain. So we have this definition right here, and I guess one more quick thing that we need to know, it's that if we sum up all the probabilities right here, so if we sum up from x equals to zero, all the way up to n, because this is the domain of our x right here, if we sum up all those probabilities, so we're gonna have n choose x times p to the x times one minus p to the n minus x, it's gonna give us one, because well, we're summing up all the probabilities, so it's going to give us a one in the end. So now with all that out of the way, we can go on and try to find the expected value of our random variable x right here. And notice that x is a discrete random variable. So what we can do is we can use the definition of the expected value of some discrete random variable x, which is just the sum of x times the probability that our random variable equals to that value x. And that probability is just this expression right here, which is n choose x times p to the x times 1 minus p to the n minus x. And what exactly are our bounds right here? Well, our x can only go from 0 to n, so we're going to be summing up all of those values right there. So x going from 0 up to n. And notice one subtle thing with this expression right here. When we plug 0 into this thing right here, this x will become 0, and that's going to kill off the whole thing right here. So in fact, whenever x equals to 0, then it just adds nothing to the entire sum. So in fact, we can start this sum going from x equals to 1 to n, because it's going to be the exact same thing. So where can we go from here? Let's actually expand out this n choose x into all of the factorials. So this is going to be equal to the sum running from x equals 1 up to n of, I'm going to put x in the numerator right here, and then we're going to have n factorial over x factorial, and then n minus x, all factorial. Then we're still going to have p to the x, then 1 minus p to the n minus x like so. All right, so we've expanded out that and choose x. And let's actually try to muck around with some of these factorials a little bit. Because notice we have this x factorial right here. And what exactly is x factorial? If we have x factorial, that's equal to x times x minus one times x minus two times x minus three dot 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 until you multiply by two and then one. Okay, and notice that embedded into this factorial is actually another factorial, which is this part right here. Because if you have a look at this part only, we're starting at x minus 1 and we're multiplying by all the integers downwards. So this part right here is actually x minus 1 factorial. So whenever we have x factorial, we can actually write that as x times x minus 1 factorial it's the exact same thing. So we can kind of use this alternate expression for the x factorial inside of our sum right here. So let's actually do that replacement. So now we're gonna have the sum of x times n factorial over, and now our x factorial right here is exactly x times x minus one factorial. And then we're still gonna have this n minus x hanging off the ends right here. And then we're gonna have p to the x times one minus p to the n minus x. And you can kind of see why I did this thing right here because now we have these x's which nicely cancel out. So now what we wanna start doing is kind of turn this expression right here back into the definition of the binomial probability distribution. Because now we have this x minus one factorial which is a little bit hard to deal with. So it'd be nice if we can somehow turn all the x's into x minus one somehow. And here's how we can do that. First of all, let's take a look at this n minus x factorial. We have this n minus x, but ideally we would like this to be equal to n minus 
x minus 1. But we can't just throw in a negative 1 right here because that's going to change the whole thing. It's going to be equal to n minus x plus 1, which is not the same thing as n minus x. So in order to kind of counter that, we need to subtract 1 off of this side right here. Because if we do that, we're going to end up with n minus x again. And I'm just going to rearrange things a little bit here. I'm going to move this negative 1 next to the end. So we're going to have n minus 1 and then minus x minus 1 like so. So this thing right here, n minus 1 minus x minus 1, is the exact same thing as n minus x. So let's actually plug that into our sum. I'm going to put it here as well as in this exponent right here. So now if we do that, we're going to have the sum running from x equals to 1 up to n of n factorial over x minus 1 factorial and then n minus 1 minus x minus 1 or that factorial p to the x 1 minus, minus p and then this n minus x is the exact same thing as n minus 1 minus x minus 1. Right, so we've already come very far and we are very close to kind of returning this thing back into this form right here because now notice that we've kind of generated this n minus 1 as a consequence of doing all this work right here and we have this n factorial left on top but nice thing is we can turn this n factorial into n times n minus 1 factorial because of this little formula we kind of showed right here. So that ensures that we kind of have n minus 1 factorials everywhere. And now one last thing to do, we need to kind of transform this p to the x right here. Because p to the x, we kind of want x minus 1 so it matches with everything else. So p to the x is the exact same thing as p to the x minus 1 plus 1. So I'm not really changing anything there. And if you look at this x minus 1 by itself, we're going to be left with this plus 1 right here in the exponent. And whenever you have that, we're just multiplying by an extra p right here. So we have another p sitting right there. So now let's actually try and clean things up a little bit because notice our sum is with respects to x. It's really only concerns about x's. So anything that does not involve an x, we can kind of throw it outside the sum because it's pretty much just like any other constant. So I'm going to be throwing this n as well as this p outside of the sum. And if we do that, we're going to get n times p times the sum as x goes from 1 up to n of n minus 1 factorial over x minus 1 factorial and then n minus 1 minus x minus 1 and the whole thing factorial p to the x minus 1 and then 1 minus p to the n minus 1 minus x minus 1. Okay, so this thing right here looks absolutely messy, but in fact it is really quite nice because we can do a couple substitutions in order to transform it back into this form right here. So the first substitution I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be letting some new variable z be equal to x minus 1, okay? So if we do that substitution right there, we're going to get n times p times the sum and I'm going to worry about the limits later so let's just get all the stuff on the inside written down so we're going to have n minus 1 factorial still and then now instead of x minus 1 factorial we're going to have z factorial and then we're going to have n minus 1 minus z and the whole thing factorial and then we're going to have p then x minus 1 turns into a z and 1 minus p n minus 1 still and then x minus 1 right here turns into a z. So as I said before, let's try and figure out what our bounds will be. So notice here we're starting from x equals to 1 and we're going all the way up to n. And to figure out the equivalent bounds for our z right here, we just simply substitute each of these into this substitution right here. So whenever x equals to 1, we're going to have 1 minus 1, which is 0. So whenever x equals to 1, our z is equal to 0. And similarly, when our x is equal to n, we're going to have n minus 1. So our z is going to be n minus 1, like so. All right, so we've done our substitution for x minus 1. Let's do our second substitution for n minus 1. So we're going to let a new variable m be equal to n minus 1. And if we do that, we're going to get np times the sum running from z equals to 0 all the way up to n minus 1 but notice n minus 1 is exactly m so we're going to have z going from 0 to m and then we're going to have m factorial over z factorial n minus 1 is m so we're going to have m minus z factorial and then p to the z 1 minus p 
to the M minus Z. And notice this is very nice because we've kind of turned this left hand part right here back into M to Z. So this is the exact same thing as NP times the sum running from Z equals zero to M of M to Z, P to the Z, one minus P to the M minus Z. And notice this thing right here looks very familiar because that is pretty much the binomial distribution. And in fact, it's even nicer because this whole sum right here actually evaluates to one because if you have a look at this line right here, this is pretty much summing up every single probability and it's going to give us one. And so this sum right here is in the exact same form. We've just kind of changed the variables a little bit. So instead of having X going from zero to N, we have Z going from zero up to M. We still have this M choose Z right here, which nicely matches up with this N choose X. We have P to the Z and then one minus P to the M minus Z, which matches up exactly like this part right here. So in fact, this whole entire sum evaluates to one because the sum is just summing up all the binomial probabilities. And since this whole thing evaluates to one, all that we're really left with is just n times p. And in fact, n times p is exactly the expected value of our random variable x right here. So in the end, what exactly did we just find out? If we have a random variable x, which follows the binomial probability distribution, and x is a discrete random variable, then if we want to find the expected value of our random variable x, we just take our n, well, number of trials, and we just multiply it by the probability of getting a success. And that is pretty much it. That is the expected value of a binomial distribution. And the expected value, you can also call it the mean. So mu like so. So if you want to calculate the mean of a discrete random variable which follows the binomial probability distribution, what a mouthful of words, then you can just use this formula right here. So yep, that is pretty much it for this video. Um, this is my first probability video on this channel. Um, hopefully I get to make more in the future. But uh, yep, until next time, have a wonderful day and I'll see everyone later.